exciting communities and uh, but they were so thriving that the Mexican That's people were so jealous of them yeah. and their progress and there had been a ruler in um, the president, ex-priest the president, he was actually a dictator of Mexico for almost 50 years named Porfirio Diaz and he controlled the country with an iron hand he, he did everything they finally, during this period of time there were several leaders who arose and began organizing to get rid of this dictator and there are several factions Pancho Villa is just one of the factions there were the Salazar and there's the Allende and, and uh, they all were pulling to organize their forces to overthrow the government and at the same time there were robbers, bandits who took advantage of the situation and those say also you know went and raided the people pretending that they were you know pl uh, patriots and things like that so the Mormon colonies were at the mercy of several different factions the leaders of these uh, groups that wanted to overthrow the government and the the bandits that would come there and they would take you know practically everything they had and finally they had an ultimatum and one of the leaders named Salazar he said you turn over all your guns to us or we'll come in and take them away from you and well they knew they couldn't do that if they turned over all their guns they would have no defense and so they turned over part of the guns and and uh, anyway they got word that they were going to attack the Mormon colonies and so they quickly organized during the night and they left and they they uh, traveled to most of them traveled to El Paso <coughs> there's my father lived in a little in a col Colonia Diaz which was not too far from the corner ranch which is the corner of New Mexico and so he and his family went across that area but anyway after they left they they left practically everything they had they really had no money their their wealth was in the cattle and the and the farms and the produce and things like that and so they couldn't take them with them they had to leave just actually with a few beddings a little bit of bedding and the clothes on their backs and they had no money well some of the the ranchers the farmers tried to go back and salvage some of the things they left behind my grandfather Charles Edmund Richardson and my father Ray Richardson uh, went back and got permission from General Salazar to take their cattle that had their brands on them. and so they rounded up cattle which was not too far from the border and uh, they were driving them out and then a bunch of these red flaggers they called them which were basically bandits who you know they caught him and they knew my grandfather he was rather well known he was a lawyer and probably one of the best known people of the Mormon colonists and they recognized him and they felt that he had a lot of money and so they said uh, we're going to take your boy my father then was about 16 years old says so we're going to keep him until you get us I don't know three or four hundred dollars which was like several thousand dollars then and uh, so uh, they took my father and then they left my grandfather there and they had him in front of a firing squad when my father left threatening to you know, shoot him or else anyway so he didn't know really what happened to his father for about two or three months later but then they took him and kept him under guard and they traveled around the different areas and and they, they assigned an old man to to watch him and they called him Tio and uh, one night as they were around the campfire now this is not in any history but my father overheard that they were going to abuse him and so he he knew that he there's no way they would they could 
rescue him. His father didn't have any money, cash, so he couldn't ransom him. So he decided on his own that he'd have to get out and, and get away. And so they were bedding down for the night while he, uh, this guy that's supposed to teal, was supposed to take care of him. He went to bed and, and so he walked away from the campfire and the teal said, ¿A dónde vas, hijo? Where are you going, sonny? And he says, I'm worried. This thing's a mi caballo. I'm going to go unsaddle my horse. And the guy was tired of taking care of him anyway, so he just shrugged and let him go. And instead of unsaddling his horse, he picked up a saddle and got his horse and walked away from the fire, their campfire. And he walked for quite a ways until he, he dared put the saddle on and he rode away. And he rode south instead of north, figuring that he could confuse them in case they tried to follow him. So he. He went south for quite a ways, then he circled around and went back north to where his grandfather had already set up a, a house for his family in the corner ranch. And Well, like I said, he never saw his father for about two or three months later because his father's off doing other things. <laughs> what a story. It's intense, huh? I don't know, man. Well, <laughs> that's the, the strange that's thing that's was that about six or eight months later, they did the same thing. Really? They went back and tried to gather up some more of the cattle. And again, oh. some of these red faggers caught them. And this same old man, Teal, was with this other bunch. And uh, they said, okay, esta vez no, mas, no me va a escapar. This time you're not going to get away. I'll take care, make sure of that. And so they didn't even allow him to have a horse. He had to walk wherever they went. And so one night, well, and they had him sleep in the wagon box so they could watch him. So, but you know, towards the morning, why well, the guards fell asleep and he just climbed out of the wagon, wagon and walked away. And I didn't know he did it twice. Of the night, I just, I he just escaped again. Hmm. Hmm. Anyhow, cool.